Good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode 21 of the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Big Spring, Texas, and today is Sunday, November 12th. Yes, it has been a very long week. <laughs> I would like to welcome any new viewers and, of course, the returning viewers back to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Today is a very cloudy day, so I apologize for my lighting. I usually use the sunlight. However, it's going to be cloudy all day today. And it's about 57 degrees outside right now, which is just glorious Uh, but because it's kind of misty it's a little muddy so uh, I'll probably stay indoors today but if it's a nice cool day I like to sit outside in the backyard with the dogs Um, anyway yeah so uh, the temperature is starting to cool off here in Texas uh, as fall weather starts to to creep in so it's I love it but not everyone does in Texas. I feel like that's part of the reason you live in Texas because you like the warm weather as opposed to the cooler weather so not everyone finds it uh, to be a happy thing. (laughs) Uh, I don't blame those who... um, so I teach at, at the college and we have athletes, we have plenty of um, teams and yeah I guess as a baseball or softball player I probably wouldn't be such a fan of the colder weather having to practice outside in the cold so I can understand that however I am a knitter (laughs) so I love the cold (laughs) anyway uh yeah so it's it's the weekend it's almost over it's Sunday It's been cloudy all weekend, and so I'll just, you know, go with the lighting I have. I have the lamps on, so um, we'll see how this goes, but uh, it's podcast or don't podcast, so I'll podcast. Uh, Yeah, I have my cup of tea. I'm drinking some cinnamon tea, and um, let's get on with the show, hey? So first thing I'd like to talk about is the knit along that I'm hosting. This is the Canox Socks knit along and it's for the month of November. So all you have to do is first join the D Heart House podcast group on Ravelry. Okay, you have to be a member of the group to win. So just join the group. I mean, it's just like two clicks and uh, then knit a pair of Canox socks. So the Canox socks pattern is free on Ravelry. You can use any yarn that you want. I have no yardage or weight requirements, so just knit a pair of Canox socks. And uh, yeah, like I said, the pattern is free and it's designed by me. So I have a chatter thread going where you can ask questions about the pattern, Um, talk to each other, post progress pictures, uh, just chatter away about the knit along. And then there's a finished objects thread where you'll post a picture of your finished Canox socks once you've finished them, okay? Uh, At the end of the month, I'll be closing out the thread and I will randomly be choosing a winner. So uh, I'll probably close the thread on December 1st. So you guys will have the whole month of November to knit, and then you can post your pictures on December 1st if you need that extra day. And uh, then I'll draw winners after that. And like I said, they'll be randomly chosen, so just pop a picture in once you finish. And the winner will get to pick a bag out of my shop. So uh, D Heart House Creations on Etsy is where I sell my handmade bags and stitch markers and since it's a sock knit along the winner will get to choose a sock size bag which is the medium bag Uh, so uh, I didn't set aside a particular bag for the winner I figure I will let 
the winner pick a design that he or she likes. So that leads me into shop update because I've been trying to get more bags in the shop. So the winner has more options and, you know, of course, stock the shop. It's what I need to do anyway. So for the shop update, I have a lot of sock size bags. <laughs> Uh, last time I showed some sweater size bags which are sitting back here behind me. Uh, so I have a bunch of sock size bags this time. So D Heart House Creations on Etsy is my shop. Check it out. <laughs> so I have some uh, Thanksgiving bags for November. Uh, I forget that Canada, you all have your Thanksgiving before Halloween, right? Uh, so I always forget that. I'm sorry. These are real late for y'all. Uh, anyway, so we have the uh, Thanksgiving print with a black zipper. And then on the inside, we have either the light plaid so cream and gold and brown to go with the Thanksgiving theme or the dark plaid which is more coppery brown uh, so yeah so the sock size bag is um, the medium size bag I box out the bottom so it'll stand up on its own you know uh, I can easily fit two balls of yarn in here. So two full skeins balled up will fit in the bottom of this bag. It's, it's a cozy fit in the bottom of the bag, which I like because then the, the yarn stays as I tug on the, you know, center pull. Uh, anyway, uh, so there are uh, no pockets is just all room for your knitting. We have a handle, uh, an extra uh, tab on here, my label, D Hard House Creations. There we go. And on the inside, there's another tab with a D ring on it. So you can clip your uh, progress keepers in here, you can clip your keys on here. Um, I make the, I'll just go ahead and show these. I feel like I say this every time, but I also have some Notions pouches with the clear vinyl. Uh, and I put a clip on these, and the idea is that you can clip this on the inside of any of the bags. Okay, so it's kind of like a removable pocket, if you will. Uh, yeah, so we've got the Thanksgiving bags with either the light plaid or the dark plaid, okay? And I just think they're adorable. <laughs> okay, and then we have, yeah, I'll just go ahead and show these, the Notions pouches, and I also made these with the light plaid and the dark plaid. So they do come with the clear vinyl mm -hmm, for the bottom zipper all right so you can see all your stuff inside and and a clip so you can clip this notions pouch onto any bag uh, and I include the d-ring on the inside of my bags uh, and one of the reasons is so that you can clip this inside of your bag uh, and it fits inside of the sock size bag and definitely fits inside the sweater size bag. So, uh, yeah, so I have a couple more uh, designs for the Notions pouches, okay, with the clear vinyl. And I love the zipper because, you know, all your little things are going to stay in there. And now I started making some Christmas bags because we're getting there, folks. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, yeah, so I have, let's see, I'll just go in order here. We've got, I'm calling this the Christmas Critters bag, which is probably like my favorite. 
this is like my favorite Christmas fabric. Uh, yeah. So the rabbit is wearing a sweater. The fox has on a scarf and a hat. Of course, the snowman is wearing a scarf. You've got deer and owl with a hat. Oh my God, it's just, it's just the cutest. Okay, so this is the Christmas Critters bag. And on the inside I have, uh, it's white fabric with gold snowflakes. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but the gold is shiny. Okay, it's not glitter, so I try to avoid to put, I try to avoid putting glittery fabrics on the inside because the glitter kind of falls off and gets on whatever, and not everyone wants glitter everywhere. So it's, it's shiny metallic, it's not glitter. Okay, so the gold snowflakes are kind of shiny, which is cool. Uh, yeah, so we've got Christmas Critters sock size bag. Okay, same thing, handle, box bottom, D-ring on the inside, etc. And then we have uh, Christmas trees. This is the Christmas trees sock size bag. Yep. So it has a dark uh, background and various Christmas trees and hearts. And on the inside we have like a Christmassy plaid to go with this. So it's red and black and white and silver on the inside. Okay. Yeah, I just I just love I just love the plaids when it comes to the holidays. I just think it's so, so classic, so homey. Anyway, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, box bottom, handle, D-ring, so the Christmas trees bag. And yeah, so we've got, um, I still have some Halloween bags. We have Thanksgiving bags in the shop. And now I'm getting Christmas bags in there. And I'm also going to be making some bags that aren't holiday themed. So not everyone wants a holiday themed bag, but I wanna get the holiday themed bags in the shop first, um, in case anyone's wanting to have them for the holidays, um, then they can order them and, and get them in time. So yeah, and also, for you guys, my viewers, I have a coupon code for my shop. So again, D Hard House Creations on Etsy. The coupon code is D Hard Podcast Fifteen. D Hard Podcast Fifteen. This gets you fifteen percent off in my shop until the end of the year. Okay, so December thirty first. At 11:59, it'll expire. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, check it out. Spoil yourself. Get some gifts. Whatever. Uh, like I said before, I love uh, giving you guys what you want. So if you have any uh, requests, uh, let me know. I can keep my eyes peeled for a fabric that you know can fit your needs, and. Uh, yeah, I would, I would just love to do that for someone. So uh, send me a message on Etsy or Instagram or Ravelry. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, cool. So that covers shop update, holiday bags, <laughs> and coupon code. Okay. So let's get into the knitting, shall we? So it's, it's been a productive two weeks, I have to say. I have some finished things. I've made progress on, you know, my works in progress. Uh, and then I have some, you know, 
we'll just get there when we get there. Some not so happy knitting news. Anyway. Okay, so finished objects. So let me um, go through my pile here. Where are you? If you could see my pile, you would be so ashamed. I am not organized. Uh, yeah, so let me get the sock blocker. Oh, good lord. Oh, okay. And the other sock blocker uh, fell behind my my shelves. The shelves back here holding all of my yarn. Yeah, the second sock blocker fell behind there and I need to I need to retrieve it. So I only have one right now, but <laughs> whatever. So I finished here's the other sock. <laughs> I finished uh, Michael's TIE Fighter socks. So these are some shorty socks. And these are knit, so I knit socks cuff down, usually, like I did with these. So I used a twisted German cast on, which is nice and stretchy long tail cast on. I do two by two ribbing for 20 rounds. Then I just knit in stockinette, you know, I mean, the yarn has a pattern of itself. I don't need to put in a pattern. I use the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is a dollar. Okay, this pattern is a dollar, and I love it. And just a standard toe. Yep. So the yarn is Patton's Croy, and the color is Slate Jacquard. It's just blacks and grays. And, um, it was still boring. It was still a boring knit. Um, the blacks and the grays, even with the patterning, it was still, it was still kind of boring. But, uh, that's okay. They're finished. They're finished. And, uh, Michael has another pair of socks. So, yay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're just, I mean, they're black and gray, and, you know, once I f was able to see the pattern, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, okay, and then I lost interest, so, but, yeah, I think I started these, yeah, right, I started these two at a time, and I don't like knitting socks two at a time, but for some reason I really wanted to, and then I switched to knitting them, um, separately. I split them up on two sets of needles and just knit them side by side, so that went better. Definitely. Uh, but yeah. I use 68 stitches for his socks. Um, I use a US size 1 needle, which is a 2.25 millimeter uh, needle. And so I use 68 stitches for Michael's socks on a US-1 and 64 stitches for my socks on a US-1. Um, and that seems to be just right. Yeah. So, um, anyway, he doesn't ask for interesting socks. You know, he wants them to be plain and, you know, that way they match everything that he owns, which I understand. I understand that that train of thought is just not exciting for me. So, anyway, finished. Put him in the basket. Okay. So I'll add those to his his sock basket, and I also finished a shawl. So I finished the Raina shawl. I did not weave in my ends yet, and it needs a good blocking because it keeps just scrunching up. So the Raina shawl, so this is my Alberta Raina, and I wasn't able to completely finish the pattern because I did uh, run short on yarn. So this last bit of lace here on the end, 
was supposed to be, um, they're supposed to be twice as much. I had to cut the lace bit in half because I was running out of yarn. And I don't have the little bit that's left, but I'm telling you, I couldn't, even, I couldn't have done another row with uh, how much yarn I had left. So anyway, this is my Alberta Reina. So the pattern is the Reina shawl. Uh, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And it was very well written easy to follow any uh yeah i'd say a beginner could totally knit this um it's garter and the lace is just yarn over knit two together uh so yeah it was it was really basic i loved it it was a wonderful fun knit and the yarn is, I think I have the tag here somewhere. <sighs> Since it's not in a project bag anymore because it's finished, I'm a mess. Yeah, so this is Knit Picks fingering, uh, the Hawthorne fingering in the Alberta Arts colorway. And it's, it's just, I love it. I love it. Yeah, so you can see my end here. I haven't weaved it in. And yeah, the, the bottom edge is just a mess. It's just a mess. So I'm going to uh, give this a good soak, block it, and then take pictures to put on Ravelry <laughs> uh, to showcase this much better. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing that today, soaking and blocking. Oh yes. And weaving it ends. Not looking forward to that, but I'll do it anyway. Yep. So, yay, another shawl. I should mention I'm wearing a shawl that I finished earlier this year. This is the Campside shawl. I think it's just called Campside by Alicia Plummer, which is also a free pattern on Ravelry. I love free patterns. <laughs> uh, and this is a DK weight uh, shawl and I love it. It's gray and it matches pretty much everything I own so I can wear it all the time. Yep. I need another neutral color shawl like this so I can wear it with everything. I mean these are fun but you know it doesn't match everything so anyway. I don't care. It was fun. I love it. Okay. Stop being so critical. Gosh. So those are my finished objects. And so we'll go to works in progress. I'm a little scatterbrained because because my desk is a mess, which doesn't help me focus. Okay. So first I'm going to talk about yes, my shawl I'm working on. So this is in a uh, Woolridge Designs bag and so Woolridge Designs on Etsy uh, so this is not one of my bags and uh, yeah I won this in a knit along and I love it the sheep are just so cute <laughs> so I'm knitting the meandering shawl by Stephen West This is not a free pattern. This is a paid for pattern. So I won't show you the rest of this. Uh, well, I'll show you this picture. So that's what it's gonna look like in the end, right? So you've got the zigzaggy center line, which is fun. So my meandering shawl, ooh, is coming along. Okay. Whew. All right. So this is a uh, brioche knitting, and it's really fun. I'm loving it so much. Okay. 
So my center line, oh God, that almost fell in my T. I'm gonna move my T over here now. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that was lucky. Okay, so the center line is supposed to zig, zig and zag, right? Okay, look at my center line. <laughs> look in the middle, like here. Oh my God, I messed up, you guys. I messed up. It's easier to see on the light side, which sucks. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that right there. I messed up. <laughs> I messed up. Oh my God. See that? It's just supposed to be straight, 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 and I... But I'm not going to rip it back because I have no idea how to fix brioche. Are you kidding me? Whatever. It's called a meandering shawl and it meanders, so... That's so bad. Okay, if you know the pattern, you're going to know I messed up. If you don't know the pattern, it's not going to register that I messed up, so... It's fine. I mean, it could be a lot worse, so whatever. Okay, so the uh, stitch marker down here, my campfire, is where I was last time. So it's grown a bit. It's grown a bit and I love it. Yeah. Okay, so on this side, you can see um, the main color on this side is the dark color, and that is Malabrigo. I have the tag. Here we go. I'll just leave this here. <laughs> Malabrigo sock. And the color is, of course, on a separate tag. Here we go. Okay. Anniversario. It's gorgeous. It's it's predominantly purple, but it has like all the colors in it. And I love it. It's just it's just perfect for this. And then the light color is predominantly gray, but it's speckled with yellow and blue and pink. Hopefully you can see. And I think it's just perfect. Because it's like, it's gray, but it's not just gray. And so you're still getting color on this side. And I think it's great. Uh, so this is Dye is Cast Yarns. And the color is Rainbow Storm. And it's perfect. It's perfect. Love it love it. I bought that yarn on a whim and I'm so happy. So, so happy. <laughs> yeah. So it's growing and, uh, you know, it's going to be more difficult to show to you next time because it's already starting to get bunched up on the needles. But yeah, I'm going to keep going and and we'll see because at the ends you do more of that um, try to angle this so the light shows right on the ends of the shawl there's that interesting so I'm a little nervous since I've already messed up but basically what I just need to do is when I sit down and do the border there um, I need to focus because <laughs> I've been doing this while watching TV and I think my messing up is because I just, I wasn't focusing on this knit. I was focusing on the TV show and I was like, oh yeah, increase after the marker. No, increase before the marker. No, I don't know what I'm doing. And then, yeah. So... So that's just that, you know, um, 
Anyway, so that shawl is coming along. I'm really loving it, excited to wear it, um, especially with the reversible, um, you know, and going with the, the neutral color that I could have the gray facing out and it would just go with so many things that I wear. So I'm excited. Uh, okay, so I, oh, what do I have next? Yes. All right, so let's just go ahead and talk about this which is my not-so-happy knitting. So this is one of my bags. This is one of my sweater size bags. So D Hard House Creations. And this is on Mario print, which is mostly black and white. The coins are gold-ish, right? And Mario's like red-ish. I don't know. I like it. <sighs> anyway, so in here is a sweater for Michael and last episode I showed you guys this sweater I had finished the body and was ready to start the sleeves so I did I started a sleeve eee. I got pretty far on a sleeve which is nice so yeah I had Michael try this on right before finishing the sleeve because it was saying you know okay so let me tell you first this is the flax pattern by tin can knits which is a free pattern on Ravelry I'm knitting this in red heart yarns which is 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn okay so it's a free pattern so I, I tell you this stuff it's okay so you do the decreases on the sleeve, right? And then it says knit straight until it measures this length, right? And I was like, knit straight? This is kind of big. This is kind of like a wide, this is big. This is a wide sleeve. So I had Michael try it on because I thought, well, maybe men's sleeves are just big. <laughs> I don't know. No, this arm is huge. This sleeve is huge on him. The whole thing is huge. Sucks. Oh my god. So, so I have to rip it out, start over. So what I did, so I picked up more stitches in the underarm than the pattern called for, right? So I wouldn't get any holes, because I had that issue before. So then I immediately decreased those extra stitches. Okay, that wasn't a problem. So then it says knit straight for a few inches and then do the decreases, right? So what I'm gonna do is rip back maybe to where I finished those first few decreases of the extra stitches I picked up. Let's see if I can like shoot for that. Then I'm just gonna start these these incremental decreases I'm just gonna start doing those right away and yeah I might I might decide to do them faster too because I think it says to decrease every sixth round I might do it every fifth round to increase how quickly it decreases I don't know I don't know but I tried the pattern as is and it isn't working so I need to change it because the sleeve is just too big uh, yeah it's annoying it's just annoying when you spend all this time knitting and then it doesn't work out so you have to rip it out it's just So I'm frustrated, I'm not very happy, but you know, the shawl knitting helped and the other knitting I've been doing has helped like regain my confidence in knitting, so <laughs> I'll get to this sometime this week. I'll just rip it out while we're watching TV and then start over.
at least I don't have to do the whole body. It's just the sleeve. And once I figure out, you know, what I have to do for the one sleeve, the second sleeve should be a breeze. Okay, cool. All right, so I don't know if it's my gauge. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Why is the sleeve so large? Or maybe it's supposed to be that big, but I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. I'll just start over. Don't analyze it. Okay. Oh, I have a, I have a hoe, you guys. I have a half finished object. <laughs> okay, so this is living in one of my Halloween bags, pumpkins and plaid. And it's a Halloween sock. Excuse me. And it's November and I'm only half finished. Pfft, whatever. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, let me get this blocker again. So I was designing a sock and I knit almost the whole dang thing and tried it on and the thing was too small. Right? I could barely get it over my foot. Ugh. So I ripped it out. This seems to be a common thing now. I'm I'm <laughs> it's starting to make me scared to try new things because every time I try something new, I have to rip it out and start over. Which is frustrating. Anyway. So yeah, I uh I ripped them out and then decided, you know what, um, the yarn is a stripey yarn and I'm just going to knit stockinette and let the stripes speak for themselves instead of doing a pattern. So I scrapped that pattern. I might pick it up again later and, you know, modify it so it'll hopefully work this time. But for now, I was like, you know what, no, I'm just going to knit stockinette. I just need an easy knit to work on um, that's just knit knit knit. So um, I haven't started the second sock yet. This is just the first sock. So uh, 20 rounds of ribbing, 2 by 2 ribbing, um, stockinette, fish lips kiss heel, and standard toe. So the main yarn is Knit Picks Felici and the color is Witch's Brew. And it's fun. I like the stripes. The uh, heels, toes, and cuffs are in Knit Pick Stroll. And the color is Train Station Tonal. Yep. So I previously was just using solid black for the heels and toes and stuff. Um, and then I decided to do this tonal one instead. And I like it. I think it's I think it's cool stripes and tonal. Yeah. So, no pattern, just stockinette. But the stripes speak for themselves. I don't really need a pattern, so that's fine. <sighs> Who needs the frustration, right? Just, just knit what makes you happy. Okay. All right. So I still need a cast on the second sock. So they're not technically finished. I still need a second sock. Okay. That's good. So then I have, um, oh yeah, so I did split. So I am using only one ball of the Knit Picks Felici to make these socks. So I split it in half. Um, so here's the second half. Here's what's left of the first half. That I didn't use. It's like half a purple stripe and half a blue stripe. <laughs> but since I knit it cuffed down, I'm not going to add in all of this extra stuff into the foot. I feel like next time when I do this, I should knit them toe up so I can use all of it in the leg. Right? Because I can always add extra to the leg. But I can't add extra to the foot. I don't like my socks being too loose. So, anyway. Just thought I'd show you that. Okay. That's good. 
So then my last work in progress, this is fun. Okay, I saved the best for last. And here's why. Because this is another new design I'm working on that's working out. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Okay, I'm trying something new and it worked out this time. So I'm, so I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this sock. And so I've only knit the one so far. So again, a half object. Uh, I have the second one cast on, so I'll just show you the second one. So again, cuff down, okay? And it's a dark color and I apologize. It's a really nice dark navy color. And then I have a nice soft gray to go with it. And you all, I did my nails for you. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I, I did my nails last night, so when I podcast, I wouldn't have, you know, nasty nails. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah, sidetrack, I got myself, um, like, gel, gel nail polish um, and the little UV light and stuff, so I can basically give myself my own manicures. And uh, I love it. I love it because um, I like going and getting my nails done, but I don't like the cost. It's just, it's a little too much for my budget. I'd rather spend that money on other things, clearly. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I did my nails for you. So yeah, uh, navy and gray, and I did um, this time uh, one by one ribbing instead of two by two just switching it up you know I think it looks nice uh, I didn't do the twisted rib you know twisted rib isn't as stretchy as just the regular one by one so anyway okay I'm gonna show you this design I have not finished writing the pattern yet so what what I've done is I've taken notes on the pattern but I, I haven't typed it up officially yet. So as I was knitting this first sock, I was writing the pattern. So now as I knit the second sock, I'm going to follow my pattern and sort of be a little test knitter, basically. So the sock looks like that. Now this is without any blocking. Okay, I, I've put it on the sock blocker, but I haven't formally blocked it yet. So please don't judge me too harshly. Aren't these cool? Oh my God. Oh my God. These are so cool looking, you guys. Right? Okay. All right. So it's color work. There's a dark color and a light color and it's a tree. Yeah, I designed it. I'm pretty proud of myself. This is this is pretty cool, you guys. I have to say, I have a lot of fun with this. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to make the second sock, and then I would like to have, you know, a couple of test knitters for this pattern, I think. I think I'd like some test knitters other than myself to make sure this is legit, okay? So I didn't have any test knitters for the Canox socks because I knew I was going to have it as a free pattern and, um, and you know, low stakes, whatever, sharing everything. So for, for this, with the color work, I think I do want test knitters. Um, yeah. So... Here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a thread in the D Heart House podcast group on Ravelry uh, for test knitters, okay? And basically it's, it's going to say test knitters wanted or something like that. And uh, then we can open up, you know, things, test knitters. See, I don't have a name for this pattern yet, either, so, excuse me, that's a thing. 
I have some ideas of what I want, I just need to narrow it down. But anyway, if you would like to be a test knitter, please join the D Heart House podcast group on Ravelry and reply in the test knitters thread and I will send you, right, the pattern. And basically all you have to do is knit one sock because the second one's exactly the same. Feel free to knit two. <laughs> um, but yeah, knit a sock and send me pictures and stuff. I mean, I'll put all the details in the in the thread, okay? But um, yeah, I would like someone else to knit this other you know other than me, and give me some feedback on whether it's total rubbish, hard to follow, something needs fixing, whatever. Okay, and this is what it looks like. Mm, I love it. It's so cool. I love it. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but I did a heel flap and gusset this time for this pattern. Um, partly because the Fish Lips Kiss pattern isn't mine, okay? And it's a dollar to get it, and it's not like I'm going to write that into my pattern and say, go buy this heel pattern and then continue. Uh, so I figured I would do... Uh, a heel flap and gusset and you know include that in the pattern all right uh, of course when you're knitting your socks you can you can change it to what you want for you so you know I feel like it's easier to go from heel flap and gusset to a short row heel than it is to go from a short row to a heel flap and gusset if that makes sense I don't know anyway I didn't do any color work on the foot partly for that reason. That if you have the gusset, you have these extra stitches to worry about. And if you do a short roll heel and you don't have a gusset, then you don't have these extra stitches. So, anyway. I love it. It's so pretty. Okay, so I have the second one cast on. Like I said, I'm going to be um, following along with my pattern, but I would still like you know, one or two people to, to try it out as well and make sure that it's, I mean, I might find it easy to follow and someone else might not. So I would love that feedback. Yay. I'm so excited. Okay. I love it when things work out and I hate it when they don't. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So that wraps up my whips. Plus, I announced that I want test knitters. So now let's go into new stuff. Uh, and I don't have a lot, so this will be short. Uh, so I subscribe to Yarnbox, which is a yarn club. So I get a skein of yarn every month, and it's pretty cheap. It's like $20 a month. So I get a skein of yarn for $20. That's pretty good. I mean, tax is included, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so it's November 12th. So if any of you are getting yarn box, hopefully you have it by now. So I, they have different boxes. So I get yarn box socks. So I get sock yarn. And you get to input like, you know, I love rainbow, I hate rainbow. I love dark colors, I hate dark colors, whatever. I said I like it all because I like it all, so, okay. Um, so depending on what you chose, I don't, I don't know how they would modify it, these things for you. Now, you know, like, do the dyers send, like, three different colors, like, one bright, one dark, one neat, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, okay, so the yarn I got is this... Oh, God, that looks so gray. It's not gray. It's very pastel. Okay, that's better. It's blue and pink, and then basically like purple from where those have overlapped. So it has this cream base to the yarn, and then um, these very light pastel colors um, dyed on it. So this is... Brew City Yarns, and the label is adorable. <laughs> I think that's cute. Are you going to focus? 
Okay. Well, anyway, you can see the girl sitting on the keg. And she has her yarn. Yep. So, Bruce City Yarns. Uh, okay. Bruce City Yarns is an indie dyer operating in, ooh, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Is that how you say that? Waukesha? I'll put it on the screen. They've been creating specialty hand-dyed yarn since 2014. On tap this month. <laughs> on tap this month. Good one. Uh, is their premium draft sock yarn, which is a fingering weight yarn. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Uh, and it has 400 yards. The color of this one, I'll show you the label, <laughs> is wine in a sippy cup. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's pretty. It, um, it, this would go really nicely in brioche with something more vibrant, you know, because this would be like soft in the background and then poof, right? Mm. Anyway, it's soft. I love it. It's pretty. New to me, I can add it to the shelf and find the perfect project for it. And then I got something, uh, <laughs> just random, but, uh, yeah, so we were in Walmart as usual. Uh, and we were looking through the Christmas section because of course they're getting all of the Christmas stuff out in the stores. And <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, I did post a picture. We were looking at the uh, little buildings to put in your Christmas villages. <laughs> and there's a Walmart. You can put a Walmart in your Christmas village which I just find odd. But I'm sure someone will buy it and someone will find it hilarious. I just find it weird. I don't, I don't quite get it. But anyway, <laughs> I posted a picture of it and went, really? Okay. Uh, so we were looking, just browsing, getting ideas, and I saw this box and had to get it because, of course, uh, yeah, it's just, a, it's a little gift box with cable knitting on it because why not? <laughs> because why not? So I was like, okay, I have to have this for my craft room. It's just... <laughs> because I have to. It was only like two dollars. Yeah. It was a dollar forty-seven. <laughs> Whatever. I just thought it was cute. I thought it was really cute. And they didn't have, they did not have this in different colors. It was just the white with cables. But they had lots of really cute Christmas ones with snowmen and reindeer and stuff, so... Anyway, anyway, it's cute. So that's it for new stuff, a skein of yarn and a box. Uh, the local yarn shop in Midland, which is like 45 minutes away from me, is having a big sale. So I'm hoping um, they're not really open on the weekend. Uh, so I think I'm going to go on Friday and... Hopefully the sale will still be going, but I'm going to hopefully find some goodies to bring home. <laughs> so, um, that wraps up the knitting stuff. So if you are only here for the knitting stuff, thanks for being here. And if you'd like to stick around to hear about my adventures, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, so adventures. Well, last time I podcast, it was right before Halloween. So Halloween happened, 
We decorated. We passed out candy. Uh, not many kids came by. I think most of the kids go trunk or treating. Uh, and a lot of the churches and um, the college, a lot of places were having trunk or treat. And so I, I get it. I mean, you just have to watch your kid walk around this parking lot and get a bunch of candy rather than going door to door. I, I understand um, the appeal to that for, for multiple reasons. Uh, however, we did get like 12 kids that came by, so um, I had them take handfuls of candy. <laughs> uh, and I still had candy left over. But yeah, it was fun. Uh, I saw Boba Fett and witches and a cat and uh, just this one kid was dressed all in black. It was almost like he was going for Grim Reaper but forgot the big you know, thing that the Grim Reaper holds. I forget what that's called. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I just threw on a witch's hat and, and had the kids take handfuls of candy. Uh, I figured we wouldn't get that many stopping by anyway, so just please take this candy away. Uh, I bought a big bag because I'd rather have too much than not enough, so it worked out. Uh, yeah, so we had fun decorating. Um, I still have to take some of the decorations down. I mean, pumpkins can be left up, but I feel like I should probably take those down now. The spider web came down, thankfully. It's especially with the rainy weather. So, uh, yeah, so Halloween was fun. It would have been more fun if we wouldn't have been sick still. So, uh, I mean, last episode I was sick. Now I feel much better. I mean, my allergies are bothering me, but I'm not uh, sick with a cold. So that's good. But yeah, I just, I didn't want to pass out candy because I just wanted to go to sleep. But I had the decorations up and the lights on. So yeah, we passed out candy till about eight and then turned the lights off and called it a night because I just couldn't stay up. I was so exhausted. Uh, yeah, so Halloween could have been better had I not been sick. Uh, then the following weekend, which was not this, not this weekend, but last weekend, right? Uh, we went away for the weekend. It was uh, Michael's and my five year anniversary. So we decided to go away for the weekend. Uh, we went to Cloudcroft, New Mexico, which is a little south of Rio Doso, New Mexico. So we love going camping and hiking. So we decided to go out to uh, Cloudcroft and do a little scouting. So we didn't actually camp. We didn't know what the weather was going to be like, if campgrounds would be open. Um, anything like that. So Michael booked us a place in a bed and breakfast and we stayed, uh, was it? Oh, we just stayed the night. Uh, we didn't want to do a day trip because it was a four hour drive there, which would have been a really long day to also drive four hours back home. So we stayed the night and then drove back the next day. Uh, I'm glad we planned on that because the campgrounds were closed. Turns out they close on November 1st for the winter season, regardless of the weather. So glad we didn't plan on that. Uh, but we did drive around. We saw uh, deer, lots of deer. <laughs> um, and proper trees and mountains, and it was beautiful. So it was a wonderful weekend away. Uh, we left the dogs here with Mary and we just had a real nice stress-free weekend uh, looking at beautiful nature. We didn't do any hiking. We, we mostly drove around. We wanted to see what was there. So um, we scouted out, um, oh God, what's it called? 
oh, trailheads, uh, where the trails start, um, and campgrounds, uh, and mostly just took notes of what was there and where it was. We picked up some maps and brochures and things, so, um, so that we know what we're going to get ourselves into when we do go camping there, so that was fun. Uh... Yeah, so then, you know, working during the week, the week is is very busy for us. We, you know, start teaching at, well, Michael, one of the days he starts at, is it one or two, whatever, some of the days he, he starts teaching at 7 a.m., which sucks. I start teaching at 9.30, however, I do get into work at 8 in case kids need to stop by and talk to me. Um, classes usually start at 8, so I'm around. Uh, and it's nice to be around in case I actually helped. Um, we have a, a campus for the deaf and hard of hearing, and uh, the students will come to to our campus, the, to the main campus, I guess is what we are, uh, to take some of the classes. And they have interpreters come in, and uh, one of the classes was canceled. And so when the class was canceled, you know, the interpreters were notified, and so the student was wondering, where's my class? <laughs> and it was kind of, it worked out because I'm taking, well, beginner sign language, but I knew enough, like I could you know, finger spell the alphabet, so I was able to spell out some words, and then he'd show me the sign for it, and be like, oh, okay, all right, yeah, that's a better way to say that. Uh, but we finally figured out his class was canceled, and he could just go home. Uh, so that was kind of fun. But, um, so good thing I was there at eight. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, while we're talking about that, yes, I'm taking... A sign language class which is in the evening which is the reason I can't go to knit night uh, in Midland we have knit night on Wednesday nights and of course my class is Monday Wednesday yeah um, what you gonna do but I did learn the sign for knitting you want to know the sign for knitting <laughs> isn't that great yeah, not this, not this, guys. This. Knitting. Whatever. Um, yeah, so. Classes and more classes. It's just a crazy semester. And I have a feeling the spring is gonna feel the same way. Mm. Uh, that's okay. I love the week. The weekends are the recovery time from the very busy week, so that's okay. Um, so not so eventful things, sort of everyday things. Uh, I did finish reading a book. That's right. Uh, I don't get much time for reading, plus I'm kind of a slow reader. So I don't finish many books. My goal this year is to finish three. Three books. Not a big goal. You know why? Because I just finished my second book and it's November. Yeah. Okay, the first book was Game of Thrones book four, which is a thousand pages. Crazy for me. Uh, so that was the first book I finished this year. The second book that I just finished a few days ago uh, was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> I've never read the Harry Potter books. Um, yeah, my sister was reading them in school, and then of course they got, you know, pulled out. You can't read those in school anymore. Uh, and it just, it didn't interest me at the time because my younger sister is reading it and whatever, uh, as kids do. But I'm over it now, so I'm reading them is perfect right before bed because it's so easy. It's perfect. Much better than reading Game of Thrones right before bed. <laughs> I have less nightmares. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I just finished the first book. I started the second book 
and hopefully I can finish Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets before the end of this year, and I'll meet my three book goal. Yes. I didn't say they had to be difficult books. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so that's, that's reading. Um, so, okay, so with running. So I'm not running yet, which is frustrating. So I had a, a hip injury. My hip was hurting uh, when I'd start to run over a mile. And so I went to see the chiropractor and yeah, it turns out I was out of alignment and my uh, what was happening is my hips were off and it was uh, putting pressure on a nerve and that's what was hurting. So I've been uh, going to the chiropractor and uh, I'm feeling much better, but he's telling me I can't just start running again. I have to ease into it and take my time. Just because I feel good doesn't mean I should just start running and then injure myself again. So, so I'm walking. So uh, the past couple days I've walked a mile on the treadmill. Uh, today I'm going to walk another mile on this treadmill. And I think I'm just going to do like two weeks of walking and just slowly increasing my distance of walking. So, I mean, I do a lot of walking during the day as an instructor, but it's not the same as like walking to walk um, and walking consistently for like 30 minutes. Uh, so, so I'm going to do that and just like, I, I don't, I don't know why I need to take it easy, but do I need to like lubricate that joint or something or are the muscles like going to be sore from the adjustments? I don't, I don't understand all of the science, uh, but I do understand that I don't want to push myself too hard too fast. Um, and maybe that's all he's saying is just since I have taken a long break, I can't just pick up where I left off, which I wasn't planning on. but. He's telling me not to run still, which is frustrating. So I'm walking, I'm walking, and maybe next week he'll tell me I can start running again because this is frustrating. <laughs> um, I'm not losing any weight because I'm not working out. Um, I'm also not gaining weight, which is good. <laughs> I'm just staying still and I'm not I'm, I'm ready. I feel ready. So, so I'm walking. I'm going to listen to his advice. I'm not going to ignore it. And, um, we'll see what happens, you guys. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm just, the weather is so nice outside. Like, between the 50s and the 70s, which is like perfect for me to go running in, and I can't go running. So, I mean, by the time I can run again, I feel like it's going to be too cold outside for my lungs, and I'm going to be stuck running inside on the treadmill, which is going to happen eventually. It's just, I'll have no enjoyment outside. It's just, I mean, walking outside is fine. It's just, when I'm walking, I'm like, God, I can start running. Don't do it. <laughs> so, Anyway, that's, that's where I am. Um, that's pretty much it for, you know, my adventures. I'm, I'm walking, I'm reading, I'm knitting, I'm eating healthy, I'm trying to be very balanced about things, and, you know, as always, it's, it's a struggle. It's difficult. Um, it's not an easy thing. If it was an easy thing, no one would... <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, so... Thanks for sticking around, guys. Uh, remember to join the D-Heart House podcast group on Ravelry for knit-alongs and giveaways and test knitting. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Happy knitting! <laughs>